Hey guys, thank you for joining me. Today I will be calculating liquidity ratios for Marks and Spencer for year 2017 and 2018 using their financial statements taken from the annual reports for 2018. Liquidity ratios are an important tool to analyze the financial performance uh, for business in the area of liquidity. Liquidity means an organization's ability to pay off its obligations, debts, overdrafts, or suppliers' money when they fall due. So if they have to pay £50,000 in a month's time, do they have uh, £50,000 to pay off uh, or not? If they are unable to pay off their obligations, then they could be in trouble. Their lenders could go to the court to get them bankrupt and then the business assets will be sold to pay off its liabilities. And it does happen quite often with the businesses who are not able to pay off their loans. So we will be calculating uh, three uh, ratios in this area. The first ratio which we will be calculating is current ratio. Current ratio equals current assets divided by current liabilities. From the formula, it's very obvious what it does. It compares current assets, which can be converted into cash fairly quickly within 12 months with its current liabilities, the liabilities which needs paying within next 12 months. So it tries to assess if we are able to sell off all of our current assets or convert all of our current assets into cash and then use that cash to pay off its liabilities. Ideally, ideally, the current assets of a business should be twice as much as their liabilities. And there are reasons which are more uh, clear uh, when we will discuss quick ratio. This means if your current liabilities are 100,000, then your current assets should be 200,000 pounds. So let's see what is the situation with Marks and Spencer. This ratio uses uh, two figures, current assets and current liabilities, and both of these figures can be found in statement of financial position or balance sheet. So let's look at our current assets. The total current assets are given for both here as 1,317 point9 million in 2018 and 1723.3 million in 2017 and the amount of current liabilities is 1826 for 2018 and 2368 for 2017 so i'll take you to my excel now where i will be using these figures to calculate this ratio okay so you already got some labeling done here what I need here is uh, I'll have my first workings column and then 2018 and then workings again and 2017. All right. So then what do we need is current ratio. So from the formula, we need two figures, current assets and current liabilities. And both the figure which we can see from our statement of financial position for 2018, first of all, 1317.9 divided by 1826. So I'll use the division sign and I can calculate my ratio. I'll do that. Uh, so I divide my current assets with current liabilities, press enter a tab and I get my result. 
point seven two. Then for two thousand and seventeen, I have my assets one seven two three point three. 172.3 divided by my current liabilities 2368. 2368. I'll do the maths. And that is 0 0.73, I think. Should be only two decimal places, not more than that. These results means that um, in 2018, for every one pound of liability, they had 72 pence readily available to pay off their liabilities. And very similar results in 2017 to 73 pence for a pound to pay off. This means if all of their creditors come together to ask and ask their money, they will not be able to pay all of this. However, this is an extreme situation and generally it does not happen. It, it does happen when a business is in trouble, when everybody knows that business is struggling and it may shut off anytime. In that case, it can happen. But for a running business, it does not happen that often. What should also be noted that those businesses who sell on cash, retailers, for example, Marks and Spencer, John Lewis, Tesco, Sainsbury, Asta, Morrison's, Little, LD, or all of those high street shops who sell on cash. Normally, their liquidity ratio is very low. And the reason for that is that they can generate cash fairly quickly. And that would mean they can pay off their liabilities if they fall due. So they don't have to keep a lot of cash as their current assets. Hence, the low current assets and the current ratio. However, for those businesses who don't sell on cash, normally their business they're dealing with business to business. So because they're dealing with another business, most of the times their sales would be on credit. In that case, they do need to keep sufficient amount of cash in the business not only to complete uh, the manufacturing process, but also to pay off their liabilities if they fall due. Historically, it was believed that businesses should have uh, enough amount of cash all the time so that uh, they can pay off their uh, liabilities when they fall due. However, the new thinking is that there is no point keeping cash in your account because that cash can create more money if it's invested in the long-term assets. Otherwise, most of the time, businesses have to keep cash uh, with them by borrowing. So there's no point borrowing money just to keep the cash in the bank account. So this new philosophy about uh, the, the liquidity is that uh, businesses should not keep cash unless it is, uh, it is really important. And for retailers, it's not really important because they can generate cash on a regular basis. So that's why Marks and Spencer have low liquidity in, in comparison to the ideal figure of two ratio one. These ratios do significantly vary depending on the sector and industry of businesses. So as I said before, manufacturer would normally have a lot more than two, whereas retailers would have less. So the overall finding of this ratio is that Marks and Spencer liquidity ratio seems less however if we keep in mind the sector they're working in it is sufficient the next ratio is quick ratio quick ratio is a very similar ratio to the current ratio however it takes away the inventory from current assets so the formula for quick ratio or asset test ratio is current assets minus inventories divided by liabilities the reason we take away inventory from our current assets is because inventory is the least liquid asset. Normally, you will see uh, three assets in the current uh, assets area, and these are cash, account receivable, and inventory. And mostly around 90% of the current assets comprise of uh, these three assets. 
Cash itself is cash, so there's no problem there. Account receivables are quite easy to convert into cash. If business is in trouble, they can chase their customers to pay them early. However, if the customers don't pay them early, uh, they can also sell their receivables and get a loan against those receivables. So it can be converted into cash fairly quickly. However, when it comes to inventory, inventory is very difficult to sell on a short notice. Normally, you would have seen 50% sales and 70% sales. And this is an effort to sell the inventories quickly. And you can see that uh, around 70% of the sales price is not recoverable if the business is selling their inventories at a 70% 70 70 discount. So this is a, a, a good example. In my personal experience, when businesses are closing down, most of their inventories is discarded because they are just unable to sell it. So let's look at Marks and Spencer's quick ratio now and see what the results we can see there. Current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities I already have these figures all I need to do is uh, take away the inventory figures which I'll do later just trying to work smart rather than hard so inventory figure would be given in our current assets so if we go to current assets the first figure is inventories 781 and 758.5 781 for 2008 and 758.5 five for 2017 doing the maths twenty one seven nine minus seven eighty one divided by and uh, then again for two thousand seventeen And we get our results as 29 pence for a pound in 2018 and 41 pence for a pound for 2017. Uh, we can see that uh, quick ratio has uh, deteriorated quite significantly uh, in 2018 in comparison to 2017. We could calculate uh, the percentage deterioration, which would be 0.41 minus 0.29 divided by 0.41 and that is a 28% decrease in our uh, quick ratio. Both of those are far below ideal ratio. Uh, ideally it should be one ratio one. However, uh, we can see that they have only 29 pound for every 100 pound to pay if all of their uh, liabilities uh, have to be settled um, uh, quickly and then 41 pounds for 100 pound in 2017 for retailers normally these ratios are uh, in in this area they are not um, they're not out of the place results these are quite expected results however uh, if your uh, business is working in manufacturing sector then their quick rate should be a lot more so while you're interpreting the results make sure that you always link it with the scenario with the situation if you simply say that um, uh, this ratio is way too low than than the ideal without thinking that's a retailer they don't really need to keep that much cash you will not get 
marks for that analysis. The third and the last ratio which I'm going to look into in this uh, in the liquidity area is uh, cash cover ratio. Cash cover ratio compares the net cash flow from operating activities. So how much cash we generated by doing our core operation, not by uh, borrowing or not by selling our assets. So how much cash we generated from our operations divided by how much cash do we need to pay out to settle our liability. In cash cover ratio, we compare our total liabilities with the cash generated from operating activities. So let's look at uh, our cash cover ratio. So let's solve this ratio now. Looking at our formula, we need two figures. The first one is uh, cash generated from operations. And the second figure is our current liabilities. Cash generated from operation figure can be obtained from our statement of cash flow. We already know our current liability, so I'll do that first to make things quicker. And then we'll pick up our. So, going to my statement of cash flow, which is normally the fourth statement, cash operated from activities is. 849.8 and 1067.7. So 849.8, first of all, let's do this. 849.8 and 1067.7. 1067.7. Let's use the division sign here to keep things clear. And now doing the math, cash spread from rating activities divided by our current liabilities, and the same thing for 2017. Reducing my decimal places, 45 pence for a pound and 47 pence for a pound. Okay. This doesn't look good. Uh, this means that um, if we have to pay, if Marks and Spencer have to pay one pound in future in a year time, they will only be generating 47 pence for in the next 12 months. So they will be generating less money, 45 pence and 47 pence. Uh, the difference is very small if we look at uh, horizontal analysis. However, the figure itself is very small. So what could be done to resolve this issue? Um, they could try to generate more cash by making more sales. So different marketing strategy, for example. On the other hand, uh, maybe an, a short-term loan would be required. But if this problem is uh, persistent over a long time, then maybe uh, a, a longer-term loan should be acquired to resolve this problem. It will be worth comparing these figures with other uh, companies in the same sector to see how the results are with the other companies, which will help you to analyze these results in a bit more details. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in another video soon.